So uh, yeah, good evening everyone. Uh, I think everyone is tired and already left, but um, it, it helps. Uh, the stream is being recorded, too, so hello to people on the International Space Station. And uh, so today I'll be talking about automate your IX route server config and uh, uh, how many people in the audience are familiar with an internet exchange? Can you raise hand? Since not everyone, I'll just quickly explain what an internet exchange is. <clears throat> an internet exchange is a place where uh, networks interconnect, the autonomous networks interconnect. So an autonomous network can be any ISP or a content player. Uh, these are the places which are actually responsible for, for interconnecting and, and, and that's where a large number of data flows from content networks towards the eyeball ISP networks. Um, it's, it's common to call ISP networks as eyeballs because that's where eyeballs are. And uh, uh, in India, there are multiple exchanges. So in, in back then in 2004, Nixi was started, which is National Internet Exchange of India, partially government. Uh, then uh, in last four or five years, there have been number of uh, smaller exchanges which have, which have come over. And uh, the reason for those exchanges to exist is because they are facilitating in interconnect of uh, content players with the, with the eyeballs. Uh, near to Bangalore, I can imagine would be probably Mumbai and Chennai. So Chennai, you have uh, you know, you have Nixie Chennai, you have Extreme IX, and in Mumbai there are lots and lots of exchanges. So it's Nixie, it's Extreme, uh, it's Bharat IX where I'm contributing uh, as 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 a volunteer, and uh, you have you have uh, DecX, you have M6 India, and so on. So today's talk is about how you uh, automate your route servers config. I'll give an introduction what an route server is and, and how it works. So first, how, how networks interconnect at internet exchanges. So imagine a network like say Google or Microsoft or, or, or LinkedIn interconnecting with eyeball networks like say Airtel or ACT and so on uh, at an exchange. So there are two possible options. One is bilateral peering, where members all connect on the same switch, which is the uh, which is a layer two switch. By design, it has to be layer two. It should not be layer three. So members connect on the layer two switch, and uh, then they just start creating BGP sessions. So you have say two members. You, they both create BGP sessions with each other, a bilateral BGP session, and they start exchanging routes. So that's how it works. The other option is multilateral peering. In multilateral peering, members still connect to the shared peering fabric, but instead of creating BGP sessions with each other, they create BGP session with a route server. It helps by reducing the number of sessions because now if you are, say, 10th person at IX, you don't have to manage creating of BGP sessions with all other nine members. You can just create with one, one uh, route server or possibly two route servers for redundancy and, and get, get going. So what a route server does, uh, it's an important feature. When you peer with route server, route server reflects you all the routes. So imagine an internet exchange with around 10 members. A route server will reflect all nine members to you and your routes to those nine members. It will not change the next hope, uh, next hope, uh, uh, next hope IP. So whether you have bilateral session or you have uh, have multilateral session via route server, the traffic flow is exactly the same. There's no difference in traffic flow. The real traffic never flows through the route server. Traffic always flows through the switches. It's just that uh, route server is facilitating the exchange of exchange of data, exchange of routing data. Uh, it is often desired that uh, exchanges route transparently, so you you should not see the route server AS number in the in the in the AS path. Uh, it, it varies based on exchanges. Uh, I think probably if I have to put a guess, probably 80 to 90% exchanges uh, follow this. So you will not see their AS number in the AS path. Uh, there are certain large exceptions as well. For instance, uh, HKIX, Hong Kong Internet Exchange, its route server does appear in the AS path. Uh, in case of India, uh, Nixie's ASN does appear in the AS path as per their policy. Uh, for all the other newer exchanges which have come over, they, they do it transparently and uh, it has an effect. If you have route servers AS number appearing in the AS path, you are unnecessarily uh, extending the length of, of ASNs. And now as AS path length is increased, the path may not be followed while it should be ideally. So, so it has an effect. Uh, again, often desired feature of a route server, they should do filtering based on IRR. Um, if you are not sure about IRR, maybe you can check out my yesterday's talk uh, in detail about routing security that covers uh, IRR in detail. So it is desired 
that route servers do filtering based on based on route objects and AS sets. And again, as a last feature, it is often desired that route server offers BGP community where one can control route announcement. Uh, this is especially true with super large content players who are very much worried about announcing their routes to a route server as the announcement can go beyond a certain point and they want to control it. They don't want a scenario where someone is, is just exporting those routes in a different region. So they want that control. And I can personally tell you the fourth was the reason we, we started working on this project because other two options, I can still make them work without automating. But uh, fourth option is really painful. Uh, IRR is painful, but still one can somehow manage. So uh, <clears throat> the challenge, as I said, uh, how do you generate filters based on IRR? And this is not a one-time thing. You have to do it at a regular basis. So it should be either a few hours or at max a day. You should regenerate the whole config of filtering uh, with that. And the other thing, of course, to offer the, the uh, peer-specific export rules. Uh, by design, an exchange route server accepts uh, and has import policies specific to peer. So if, if, uh, if I am the route server, I would have a specific policy for peer one, specific for peer two, specific for peer three on the import side, but I would have a same common policy for the export. But if you want to offer uh, the, the BGP community's control, this can't be true anymore. You have to have separate export policies and it becomes very tedious to do that by hand. Solution, uh, uh, we use a tool called a route server. That's an open source tool. Uh, the developer of the tool is uh, one of the engineers at Cloudflare and uh, he has uh, written this very excellent tool uh, on, and it's there on GitHub along with the documentation. It supports generating the route server config for both BIRD and OpenBGPD. Uh, OpenBGPD is still relatively new while BIRD is, is quite old and advanced. Uh, it's, it's really stable package uh, and, and lots and lots of uh, exchanges at, at large scale use uh, utilize BIRD. So here's how it works. You, you are supposed to set up the package and initialize it. Then you just add the peers details in the client.yaml and uh, you generate the uh, route server daemon config. So you define whether you are using BIRD, so it will generate the syntax for BIRD. Whether if you want it for, for, uh, for the open BGPD, it will generate the syntax for open BGPD and, and so on. Uh, and of course it checks the config and, and then, then you push it. So uh, just some uh, basic syntax for, for, for you know, commands installing on, on Debian Ubuntu. Uh, in our case, I can uh, probably take a minute to explain. In our case, we are running uh, LXC containers for running a route server. So it's two different set of hardwares running uh, LXC containers for, uh, for the a route server and uh, some other things, including, including looking glass and, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> the config is generated uh, on locally on uh, the laptops for admins. So it's uh, two admins involved right now, one myself and then another uh, my colleague. So we just generate the config by hand and then just push it, uh, push it uh, by using uh, Ansible, uh, utilizing an Ansible role for it. Here's how clients.yaml look like. It's extremely simple, easy to read files. So all you define is ASN. So for an example here, we have put AS22. You define AS set, which is the set of ASNs behind it, if, if you are aware. So if we have a member ISP joining in the exchange saying my AS set is AS hyphen my, my name, please allow all the prefixes from that. We would just put it here. Uh, although as a practice, we are, try, we are trying our best not to, not to do it and instead make the package learn that from the peering DB because then it stays uh, up, up to date all the time. And uh, if you don't define asset by default, it will pull it from the peering DB, which is essentially a very big database of all the, all the interconnection world. Uh, if you want to see which network interconnects where, you can probably look at peering DB. It's, it's good data with, with respect to ASNs internet exchanges as well as the facilities. Uh, you, define the, uh, you define the IP address and uh, it supports IPv6 of course and uh, you can also define certain other, other things in the syntax. So here's an example of, of generating the config just to a route server and here you write the daemon name which you're going to use, IP version and then the uh, destination where you, want, uh, where you want the config so we are just using the destination as, as, the, uh, as, the, as the location of bird config in this case. Uh, if you want, you can use a separate location, do a diff before, before committing it on, on production. And same thing for, for IPv6. So you can set the same thing up with a cron job and uh, that again that again helps uh, by, by uh, 
automatically generating the filters. At this point of time in uh, Bharat IX, we are running a cron job uh, at every hour on uh, on the on both the route servers. So both the route servers uh, run uh, regenerate their entire config, and that's at a gap of 30 minutes. So uh, one one route server would you know just do it at the zeroth minute, while the other one will do it thirtieth minute. Will rewrite the whole config and commit it and, and proceed. And there are checks and checks and balances in place that if just in case, uh, assuming that internet connectivity is broken or something else is broken, where package is not able to generate config, it will it will halt the process. So uh, the key advantage uh, besides route filtering here is the BGP community support. BGP community, as you, you might have learned over time, is these are simply the tags which are transitive in nature. So using these tags, one can define certain things. So I can announce a route with a BGP community tag, and the other network can interpret that tag based on their routing policy. So uh, at, at, at uh, ISP level, it's very common to use certain communities like a black hole community, which is often 666. So if you are connected to an ISP, say AS123, it, it, it is quite common that they would have implemented 123 colon 666, where if you originate a route with that tag, they would just drop the traffic if, if you are under DDoS. So that helps. Uh, there are a lot of other use cases for BGP community, especially with the fact that you can limit your announcement. So ISP may give you a community saying, tag your routes with community X and we'll make sure that we keep your routes only in India. We do not announce them outside India or we keep them in Asia. And the same thing on the other side as well. ISPs also tag the routes they learn and they announce you. So they may say, whatever routes have a tag X, Y, we are learning in Europe, whatever tag has uh, whatever route has a tag x y2 we are learning in in asia and so on so now you can make automated policy where you prefer isp1 for sending traffic to asia isp2 for sending traffic to europe and so on so here's an example and this is totally out of box uh, from uh, from the from the a route server we we, we didn't manually edit any of these things so it will generate uh, these communities to work oops it will generate these communities to work on the on the project on its own so uh, there are basic options. So you have the do not announce to any client. So you can announce a route to route server. And if you are testing for some time, you can tag uh, tag uh, it, it with that. Then you have option of do not announce to peer, where you can tag your route with, with zero colon peer. So imagine exchange, as, as I was giving in the example, with 10 members. You want to announce your route to uh, uh, all other eight members except one the ninth member so you can say zero colon nine and now the ninth member would not receive your route so it, it significantly helps as now you can control your route announcements and it's uh, common to use these communities if you know that one member is leaking your route or one member has a has a port capacity issue at an exchange you have other options including prepending so you can prepend once twice or thrice and and that again that again helps uh, to to control and limit the announcement uh, at this point of time in India, it's not that common to use communities, and that has more to do with the uh, Indian ISPs not uh, not not sharing communities, not implementing them uh, for the customers. But but it, it, it is it is it is picking up over time. Uh, on the exchange side, uh, it's it's really important and much easier to deploy against say deploying it for a large IX, uh, ISP. Some of the other features of the open source package, which are worth mentioning, it has support for out-of-box support for uh, ROS. So we have a full RPKI implementation in Bharat IX, which is uh, resource PKI. So anyone, any route we receive, we validate it for ROS. If we see an invalid ROA, which is route authorization, resource authorization object, we are going to just deny it. If, uh, if ROA is fine, or if there is a missing ROA, we'll accept it. So that helps. It has support for graceful shutdown of BGP sessions, which has been a newer RFC, which uh, supports uh, uh, signaling when you are shutting down, uh, you know, shutting down your your BGP daemon, because uh, other side may be a fully loaded router, which may take a few minutes for to reflect back and maybe black holing routes for meanwhile. So instead of instead of heartbreaking, you can always do a graceful shutdown. Uh, it has integration with peering DB for AS set conf uh, for pulling the AS set. I just mentioned that, and uh, this is this is a preferred way we we try to force all the members to update their peering DB records before connecting to our IX. Uh, often it has been our experience that members do have peering DB record, but they miss putting AS set. So we always always suggest them guide them to do that. 
It has integration with IXP Manager, which again is a is an open source project uh, coming from uh, Inix Exchange in Dublin, and uh, it's it's a it's one of uh, the very advanced and good projects where Inix was uh, putting up softwares for managing their exchange, and eventually they ended up in op out, uh, op uh, you know uh, open sourcing it. So it's it's there on GitHub, and uh, we. we Overall, we tried to use that, but it just didn't make much sense at this point of time with a small scale since our IX is just in one data center, one single rack. We didn't need it uh, complication uh, to start with. But for larger exchanges, it makes much more sense to use it. It supports full RS config generation based on peering DB record. Uh, what essentially it means is exchanges do list themselves on peering DB. So if you are one of the exchanges who is not using this software and wants to start using it, all you can do is just point the software towards the peering DB record and it will see what peers are there at your exchange and will generate the required config. So it's very, it, this this uh, option makes it extremely easy to migrate to the, the route server, although you will still have certain challenges here, which would be if you have uh, passwords on your BGP session, you still have to update your config file to add them. And it has an Ansible role for configuring it via Ansible. We utilize that heavily at this point of time. So we just have clients.yml sitting on our laptop. We make the changes, we commit it, push it on the Git, and the server automatically pulls the change and then generates the config within uh, 30 to 60 minutes, uh, 60 minutes time. So it would be either 0th minute or the 30th minute as per the cron job. Quick references, so a route server project, uh, that's the name of the uh, peer, peer key, is the name of the engineer who, is, uh, who, is, who, has, who has wrote it. Uh, the documentation is aware on read the docs, Ansible role is given over here. IXP manager, if you want to try something more advanced, it, IXP manager includes all the feature of a route server along with the web UI, along with, the, along with lots and lots of things including uh, port graphing of, of the members, etc. And of course, the link to Bharat IX if you're interested. If you're running an IP network, please do contact me. You know, feel free to peer at, at the exchange. We are, we are trying to make it work at a community level. That's about it. Thank you. Any questions? Um, hi, I'm, I'm Trouble. I'm a member of the internet community. Uh, what happens if you can't reach peering DB? If your route server for some reason doesn't have a route to peering DB, it's unlikely so, what happens. Uh, we, have, we, we put a custom script in place which uh, will just halt the process of, of generating the config for that time. It will wait for the cron job to run again. And since the cron job is running every hour, it's usually not a problem. When you're making changes on the config, it's uh, often not at all urgent because you are adding a new member. So new member, while has waited for a few weeks to get his cross connect and other thing done, can of course wait for another hour or two uh, while the internet connection goes back online or the peering DB comes back online. And a re related question, can you trust peering DB? Well, uh, if uh, beyond peering DB, you may also ask the same question: Can you trust IRR as itself? So anyone can go and register anything in IRR. So it's just that uh, in absence of these systems, it becomes a total chaos. So you can have those systems in place. Uh, the the if you, if you relate the number of route leaks, again, one has to do it uh, in a loose term. But I think a large part of route leaks or the problems which are there in say routing table are not documented on IRR in the same way. I've yet to come across a case where uh, where people write something crazy on peering DB to, to influence influence the networks. Plus of course, when you are connecting it in IX, we always, you know, we'll look at the company, we'll look at whether it is a real network or not. We'll look at their, their, their domain name, their email addresses from where it's coming. If it's a totally strange email uh, requesting for for a totally unrelated AS number, we would we would request them to send mail. This has been one of the cases where there was a large uh, multi-million dollar ISP who were operating with different names and different AS numbers. So they contacted us with one AS number. And when we see on the documentation, the email was to from a totally unrelated domain. So so we cannot trust, but I think we can we can add some some intelligence on top of it. Any other questions? Anyone? Thank you. Thanks a lot, Anurag. And that probably ends day two at RootConf. I hope everybody had a great time. And